Jeremiah chapter 21. The, Lord, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, when King Zech, Zechari, uh, Zedekiah sent unto him Pasher, the son of Malachiah. Now that's not the same Pasher in chapter 20. That Pasher is the son of Immer. This is a different Pasher. And Zephaniah, the son of Masila. I believe these two names are going to show up later on in accordance with this chapter. The priest saying, so these are priests, again. Uh, the other, in, I mean, Pasher in chapter 20 was a priest. Jeremiah is a priest. <clears throat> so Jeremiah is sent to speak to his own people, the children of Levi. Inquire, I pray thee, for the Lord for us. Okay. Zechariah wanted information from Jeremiah, so he sends two priests. And the subject is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. This is the first time his name shows up in the Bible. King of Babylon maketh war against us. So here is Nebuchadnezzar. He's at the walls, and he's ready to attack. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous work, that he, that he may go up from us. Why? You've been sinning against him. You haven't listened to Jeremiah. <clears throat> but now you want God to help. There's too many people like that. They don't want God, but then when trouble comes, they start praying. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah. Now here's the message. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands. I feel sorry for these two guys that go back to the king and get this message. He says, When the Jewish people are going to hold weapons of war, I'm going to turn them against you. Wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon. When you fight against the king, you're not going to win. And against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls. So they're outside the walls now. They're surrounded. And I will assemble them into the midst of this city. They're not only outside the walls, Zedekiah, but they're coming in. And your weapons are going to fail. Your defense is going to fail. And I, God, myself, God, will fight against you. Uh-oh. With an outstretched hand, with a strong arm, even in anger and fury, and in great wrath. Go back and tell that to the king. I wonder what these guys really told the king when they went back. Did they water the message down? This is not good news. This is not God is love. This is a holy and righteous God and he's angry. Uh, and I, God, will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. Notice animals suffer from man's sins and violation of God also. Isn't that interesting? Because a man sins and disobedience to God, the beasts suffer. They shall die of great pestilence. Here, God would leave the animals alone. They didn't do nothing. They must be offering to other gods. Gideon had to offered a second bullet because the first one was given to Baal. They were offering sacrifices to the fallen gods. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I, God, will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, the one who inquired, and his servants, the people who take care of him in his palace, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. 
So anybody that survives is going with the king, the enemy. And into the hand of their enemies. And into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. War. And he shall not spare them. Neither have pity nor have mercy. It's utter destruction and death. Chaos. That was the message of Zedekiah. There you go. What were the two priests' names? Go back and tell that to the king. Make sure you tell every word of God, pure and all. Don't omit anything. Don't add anything. And unto this people thou shalt say, not to the people. Speak to the people. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I, God, set before you the way of life and the way of death. Here's a free will. God is going to give you a choice. That mean, nasty God. Look out your city. See the enemy out there? Look to your life. I'm going to offer you something. Today I'll offer you the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Or I'll give you death. Free will. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence. So if you stay in your city and pick up your guns and fight for your nation, fight for your country, you're going to die and lose. That's a great choice. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live and his life shall be unto him for a prey. If you surrender yourselves to the enemy, you're going to live. Death if you stay in the land, life if you go. That's some kind of choice. Death if you stay, life if you leave. That's what God has to offer them. For I have set my face against this city for evil, the consequence of sin, and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And when Ezra and Nehemiah come, they find exactly as that. And touching the house of the king of Judah, say, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Preaching about the house of the king, now the palace. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, Execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And they're still treating people wrong. The employers are still getting advantage of the employees. Least my fury go out like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doing. Man, they're mistreating the people. They're just, they got them on the burdens that they can't get out. There's no freedom. It's force. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitants of the valley, and the rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us? And who shall enter into our habitation? We're, look at us. Who's going to attack us? That army ain't going to do nothing. We're, we're strong. We're mighty. But I, God, will punish you according to the fruit of your doings. Uh-oh. You're going to get what you deserve, saith the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof. Oh, you're going to burn the trees. Oh. To save the tree, Lord, and it should devour all things round about. When God sets a fire, <laughs> you got a hard time. And this fire is going to destroy these inhabitants, the fire is going to destroy the city. And the only way of life that you got is if you go to the enemy and surrender yourself. What a choice! Zedekiah comes and Jeremiah tells him, guess what? 
If you fight against the, the, the Babylonians, you're going to lose. And you're going to lose hard. For the people, here's a way of life, here's a way of death. And for the king and his home and his house and all that, destruction. I'm going to burn it all up. I'm going to destroy it all. 